Hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel. Subscribe, like and don't forget to share your thoughts on what you think about today's video. Now in a world where human rights matter, a crucial conversation is unfolding as a global community grapples with the complexities of conflict and justice. An interesting phenomenon is emerging. Now countries like Japan, the Maldives and Malaysia are taking a stance, citing international law and humanitarian concerns. They are drawing a line between hospitality and complicity and Israelis are facing the consequences. Now it's not about discrimination, it's about accountability. So with that said, join me as we take a look into the stories, the arguments and the implications. Let's explore the intersection of politics, morality and hospitality and discover what happens when nations put principles over profits and politics. I will be right back. Check out these videos. Hotels in Japan now refuse to accept Israeli tourists. Israelis on social media are claiming that they are being denied lodging at hotels in Japan because, according to the Japanese, harboring anyone with ties to the IDF could be considered accessories to war crimes. This is the kind of messages that the Japanese hotels are sending to these tourists, letting them know why they cannot accept their reservations. Basically saying that, hey, because of the possible war crimes being committed by the IDF, we are not able to accept reservations from persons we believe might have ties to the Israeli army and then it goes on to school them on the Geneva conventions and so if the hotel provides lodging to the IDF who are you know accused of carrying out war crimes then the hotel will be an accomplice or an accessory to said war crime and it's not just Asia they're also being banned from spaces in Western Europe such as France a French court has banned Israeli firms from an arms security show this is the reasoning the French defense ministry gave for banning the Israeli army from participating in the show. They said, and I quote, the conditions are no longer right to host Israeli companies at the Paris show, given that the French president is calling for the secession of the IDF operations in Rafah. And on top of all of that, the BDS movement is going strong, so strong, in fact, that one in three consumers are boycotting brands over Israel's war on Gaza poll finds. The survey polled 15,000 consumers across 15 countries, including France, Saudi Arabia, the UK, and US. Israelis are starting to be denied housing and lodging in places like Japan because of the genocide that's happening in Gaza. The reason that they gave is due to the ongoing trial for genocide in the ICJ. They don't want to be seen as being accessories to these war crimes by giving IDF members lodging. And this is just further example of how Israel has become the pariah state of this world and they will continue to be more and more isolated with only the U.S. Empire and their vassal states as their last remaining ally. Tell me what you guys think about this. Island Resort Nation bars Israelis, which means they're banned from entering this beautiful, wonderful country. The Maldives have banned all Israelis from entering or visiting their country because of what's happening in Gaza. I haven't seen this on TikTok. I think this news is being suppressed. They don't want people to hear about this. They don't want more countries to start doing this. But what do you think? I think this is incredible. I woke up and I was like, wow, you know what? It's not all doom and gloom. There's some good things still happening. The Maldives is a beautiful, amazing place. And now you can be sure that if you visit there, there will be no Israelis or IDF soldiers that have just done their thing and then gone on vacation, which is what they do. Which is interesting because I just got back from Thailand and Koh Phangan Yang and Koh Samui, 90% of their population are Israelis and Israeli soldiers. So maybe they should be next. Thailand, are you gonna step up and kick the Israeli soldiers out after they killing children and then they go on vacation? That's why I left. It was literally horrific. These people are extremely rude. They're pushing, they're shoving, they're aggressive. And the things, that I, don't, I don't need any more details. But what do you guys think about this? We have another win on our hands. Uh, the Malaysian government has announced that they are banning Israeli-owned and Israeli-linked ships from docking on their ports, um, citing cruelty to the Palestinian people as the reason why they're putting the sanction in place. Malaysia is actually one of the countries that already didn't recognize Israel, um, but I'm so glad that they decided to do this. Global sanctions is how apartheid ended in South Africa, so I'm so glad that we're now starting to collectively see countries opposing the Israeli terrorist organization. Now, just like we have heard, these videos shed light on a crucial and complex issue, highlighting the growing trend of countries denying lodging to Israelis due to concerns over war crimes and human rights violations. Now, the testimonies and explanations provided over a nuanced perspective on the matter, emphasizing the importance of accountability 
and international law. It's striking to see nations taking a stance drawing a line between hospitality and complicity. This development raises essential questions about morality, politics, and the role of governments in upholding human rights. Now, according to Israeli ambassador, he reported that the embassy received numerous messages expressing outrage at Kyoto's material hotel after its manager informed an Israeli tourist that he would not be accommodated due to allegations of Israeli war crimes in Gaza. We are not able to accept reservations from persons we believe might have ties to the Israeli army. Hotel manager wrote in response to the reservation request on Tuesday. Now, many who contacted the embassy noted that the hotel manager is Brazilian, not Japanese. They also argued that refusing the reservation violated Japanese law. Now, the Maldives government say it will ban Israelis from the Indian Ocean archipelago known for white sand and beaches and luxury resorts as public anger in the predominantly Muslim nation rises over the war in Gaza. Now, President Mohammad Muzu has resolved to impose a ban on Israeli passports. A spokesperson for his office said in a statement without giving details of when the new law would take effect. Now, the president also announced a national fundraising campaign called Maldivians in solidarity with Palestine. Nearly 11,000 Israelis visited the Maldives last year, which was 0.6% of total tourist arrivals. Now, official data also shows the number of Israelis visiting the Maldives dropped to 528 in the first four months of this year, down 88% compared to the corresponding period last year. Now, opposition parties and government allies in the Maldives have been putting pressure on uh, the president to ban Israelis as a sign of protest against the Gaza war. At least 36,439 Palestinians have been unalived and 82,627 wounded in the conflict since October 7. Now, in response to the ban, an Israel Foreign Ministry spokesperson urged citizens currently in the Maldives to be part. For Israel citizens staying in the country, it is recommended to consider leaving since if they fall into distress for any reason, it will be difficult for us to help. Now, Israeli passport holders have also not been allowed to enter Algeria, Bangladesh, Iran, Iraq, Lebanon, Libya, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Syria, and Yemen. In a post on X in March, the State of Israel said, we are good in response to a post about this country's entry bans, which had been in place prior to the onset of the ongoing war in Gaza. Now, as if this is not enough, Malaysia's government also announced that it was imposing a ban on all Israeli-owned and flagged ships, as well as any vessels headed to Israel from docking at its ports. Now, the announcement by the Prime Minister's office said the ban would take place with immediate effect and was in response to Israel's conduct in its conflict with Hamas. Now, this sanction is a response to Israel's actions that disregard the basic humanitarian principles and violate international law through the ongoing going unalivings and continuous cruelty against the Palestinian people. The statement read, Now, Muslim majority Malaysia has long championed Palestinian rights and causes like nearby Indonesia, Bangladesh, the Maldives and Pakistan, it does not recognize Israel. Now, all this just shows how different places or countries are showing solidarity with the Palestinians and want this to end. We have finally come to the end of the video. Share your thoughts as well on what you think about these videos in the comment section. And let's have a conversation there. Thank you for always watching and see you in my next video as I bring you another interesting video.